Brooklyn Independent Television. On In The Zone, we're at the Sky Dome, the new sports home in Bed-Stuyvesant. Eric Hicks of Game Over and Pastor Tillman will join me for that discussion. For college basketball, we have Elio Velez of MSGVarsity.com, and we will reflect on the life and times of the late, great boxing trainer, Jimmy O'Farrell. All of that on In The Zone. Welcome to the Sty Dome in bed Sty, right here off of Lafayette Street in Throop. And joining me is... Pastor Neron Tillman from um, St. Philip's Christian Church. Eric Hicks from Game Over. All right. Now, gentlemen, how did this facility get started? And give us, give us reasons why you got this thing started anyway. Um, the former pastor, uh, Reverend Shelton, uh, had a vision, and this is it now. She retired. She's gone on, but I'm here to carry out the vision. Yeah, the Sty Dome and, and um, what we're going to do here in the Sty Dome is kind of a, co a co um, collaboration with uh, Pastor Naran Tillman here in Game Over. And when I heard about the place and I actually came to see it, I was like, wow, this place is fabulous. And how we can come together and make something special here for the community was what was on my mind. Was this built up from the ground up or was there another facility? In here? No, this was this was on um, vacant land. Mm -hmm. um, she she got the land through uh, faith, <laughs> great faith, no money, great faith, and we built it up through the land. It's actually the inner court, um, you know, this the inner court sty dome. So we in the court, you do the thing. <laughs> now the question I have is why another facility? I mean, you have schools that you can probably lease property there if you want to play basketball or if you want to have plays or, or, or talent shows. Why another facility like this? You, you know, <clears throat> that's an excellent question. And I think um, what we've been as a company and what we're doing with this collaboration, mm -hmm. it's more than just basketball. Game over. It Game over. over. Yeah, it, it was more or less trying to get involved or getting involved in a situation where we can change lives and we can try to change and transform a community. You know, it starts out with basketball, but it's more about activities for the youth and teaching the principles that it takes to be successful in business and in life through sports and through the arts and through different things. So it's a space, it has basketball courts and we will be playing basketball and there'll be some top level competitions, camps and clinics like you know us at Game Over, how we always do. But it's more about transforming lives and changing the lives of kids with proper instruction. It's not gonna be the kind of place where we're just gonna roll out the ball and say, have a good time. That's not that here. Yeah, this is more or less an academy and a teaching tool. And taking the collaboration of a church and a business that does that was almost like a perfect marriage, a match made in heaven. <laughs> and um, it was an opportunity that we couldn't turn down. And um, just meeting the pastor here and the people that are behind. Out? As far as the, when did you break ground? Also, uh, the groundbreaking. I, I, it's oh, been when did you start the building process? The building. I wasn't here when the building process started. I just I just recently got installed. Um, June will be two years, but I've been in ministry for over five years. Um, so they, it was probably about six or seven years ago they, they began to break grounds, and um, it gives us an opportunity to do ministry as well as build character, but. I'm just excited, man. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 it's, 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 it's exciting. Long time coming, right? Yeah, it's been yeah. We're supposed to have been open since last June. We've been going through trials and tribulations with with the opening, but I believe that that was all a part of God's design because I was able to meet Mr. Hicks, who were, was able to take our vision to another level. With, you know, with, with the expertise Game Over bring to the table, and that was just a great. And, and great also, thing. you have your own built-in built facility, facility where you don't have to, have to, to depend on. Uh, this particular school, nothing wrong with that, or mm -hmm. a particular high school or a particular elementary school, because you know sometimes when it rains or kids, are, especially during the summertime, you're looking for an indoor facility, and that facility is not available because the janitor may want three hundred dollars for the day, or you know a particular principal may want five hundred dollars that that week, or you know whatever, right? And, and that, that, that happens. Well, we we find it in New York City as we as a company go around the country, New York City is tough you know, spaces and facilities and things like that, especially at a decent price or a decent rate is tough. So for us to have this is a blessing. And, and once again, it's an opportunity for us to change lives. And, and the Sty Dome 
at, for Bed-Stuy, Bed-Stuy Brooklyn, the Stuy Dome is going to be a state-of-the-art facility. We're looking at things like instant replay and sound system. We're going to have a full concession stand. It'll seat approximately 400 people in here. It's going to be quite a facility when we're, once we're finished with it. And AAU basketball? AAU, we have a high school that's looking at making this their home court, which is um, going to be great because we'll host their home games and their practices. AAU camps, clinics, we've talked to one of the two professional teams in the area about getting involved. Um, and really a great opportunity for the kids talent in the area. Shows talent shows everything. Right, cool. For those that got the talent, they'll be here. Yeah. That's right. All right. How about boxing? Box it also. We are going to have a martial arts competition in here, along with we have a gentleman that came by today talking about lacrosse and bringing lacrosse into the inner city and using this as an, in, an indoor training facility for young African-American kids and kids of color to get involved in another sport that they may be able to get a scholarship to going forward. Well, Pastor, thanks for coming. Thank Hold you. on right there. You know, sp- speaking of boxing, you know, you're going to be here with us in the next segment. But speaking of boxing, he started Starrett City Boxing Club back in 1978. Since then, the late great Jimmy O'Farrell trained thousands of men and women in and outside the ring. My father was recently passed. In 1978, he started Starry City Boxing Club. It was all about him, him and another guy named uh, Stanley. They started the gym. And over the years, they had uh, charitable things and formed, and they got kids off the street. The main thing my father wanted was kids off the street and teach them how to be a man, not only in the gym, but outside in regular society also. First time that I met Jimmy O was the first time that I came to Starry City Boxing Club, which was in 1996. Uh, Jimmy O, uh, really became uh, a family member to me, uh, much more than a boxing trainer. Uh, we had an incredible relationship. I learned a lot of great, great life lessons uh, from Jimmy and from being with Jimmy and from meeting different kinds of people and being in different kinds of places uh, that'll stay with me for the rest of my life. I can hear his voice. I can hear his footsteps and I can just hear the way he walks and his mannerisms and how he carries himself. And that's the type of mark that he left here. Each and every kid that comes here, whether they're new or old, they always ask about Jimmy O, the name, uh, where did it come from, what did he stand for? So he left a, a huge impact on this gym. And when we think about it, especially when we see in the backdrop the Jimmy O Muriel, um, he's uh, ever knowing and ever seeing and ever watchful uh, of the gym. A lot of opposition didn't want the club here, but he fought through it to the politicians, to petitions and all kinds of things, and councilmen and city, you know, city members and stuff like that. He uh, fought and he really, uh, he really struggled at first. It was, uh, it's hard getting the club off, you know, and uh, in the beginning, it was very tough, very hard. Before the boxing even started, he found out what kind of person the person was. Then he went on to train him from there with the jabs, with the slow road, jumping on the rope, hitting the speed bag and stuff like that. But it was a very slow process because he wanted to make sure they were good people and check out their family, background, and everything. So this way he knows how to deal with certain personalities. Jimmy really stressed uh, you know, the fact to hit and not get hit, and, and, uh, and different moves and fakes, and uh, really define our skills of boxing, techniques of boxing. Uh, and Jimmy was a great trainer, you know, uh, really learned you know, I guess most, most of my stuff from Jimmy. Jimmy was just an incredible human being. Uh, that uh, <clears throat> had vision and, uh, and realized his vision and helped a lot of people, created a lot of champions. Uh, you know, this place, Star City Boxing Club, more importantly uh, than the fact that it produced a lot of great boxers, was that it helped thousands of kids, uh, you know, get off the streets, uh, get away from, uh, from a destructive life and become productive citizens, get their life together. You know, this is really one of the best after-school programs uh, there is. Very impressive, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you. Thought he was pretty good. I think we've got enough color around here. Two points. And who's next? You uh, dropped this. Imagine the power of one voice. Find yours at freedomcenter.org.
So, you're looking for help with your mortgage. Worried about foreclosure? We can help you keep your house. All we ask for in return is that you submit to our plans for galactic domination. <laughs> Sign. If you're facing foreclosure, talk to the right people. Speak with HUD-approved housing counselors free of charge at 888-995-HOPE. My name's Lisa, and in nine years, I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, Hi Lisa. Lisa. I'll start drinking in eighth grade, and I'll do some things I don't really want to do. So by the time my parents talk to me about it, alcohol won't be my only problem. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. My parents won't believe it could happen to me. Welcome back to the Sty Dome in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. And joining me is this young man. You've seen him before. We, we talk all the time. <laughs> yes, we uh, do. So who are you with right now, man? Elliot Velasco with AdmissionVarsity.com. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. So when, so when did you make this transition? Oh, I made the transition earlier in the year. And, uh, you know, Mission Varsity is growing. You know, we're getting out to all the high schools. I uh, work with the website. You know, we're covering games on a daily basis, you know, all around the city. So we're getting exposure, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, we're in Bronx and Brooklyn on, on cable vision, but we'll be hopefully around the city in the next few years to come. Well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Now, March Madness is here, right? And of course, several New York City high school ball players, especially in the boys' side, are playing across the country, and they're doing quite well. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's what New York City basketball is all about. You know, the, the rest of this country come here because we produce, you know, all ranges of kinds of talents from point guards to, to well, centers to everything. Point guard has really, well, New York City has made really. Well, there's, there's, there's cycles. Well, there's cycles. And it just happens, you know, that you know, we, we produce, you know, Tiny Archibald, we produce the, the type of point guards that could star in the NBA and college. But uh, it's, 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 it's a cycle thing. But right now, it's about uh, quickness, about the, the wing players, your forwards, your, 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 your small guards, forwards, you can do a whole bunch of different things, the athletes. And that's what the demands right now. But as you see, listen, Kentucky could want to kill like Deron Lamb from Bishop Lachlan, and he's doing very well as a sophomore. I mean, one of the best shooters that I saw on the high school level. Uh, and from you know, the University of Florida, Irving Walker. Irving Walker, Walker you know, five. Oh, he's a fantastic guard. Christ five eight. King. Yeah, Christ the King. You know, could shoot quick, quick passing, and he's done very well in Florida. Your thoughts about some of the as far as the different players that are playing across the city, well, playing I, across I, the country at the collegiate level? Well, I think in general that the uh, play of New York City basketball is on the upswing. And like uh, he said, it's in cycles, but I think it's on the upswing now and where we found that some of the scouts weren't coming to New York in years past, they're coming here and they're uh, picking up some of our top ball players and the players are producing. And the more they go out there and produce, the more they're going to come back and uh, pick up some more. So it's a great thing. Now at Hofstra also, right? You have uh, well, Hofstra, you know, the last few years, they've, they've picked up a lot of New York City kids. You've seen that. Um, also, you've seen a lot of these kids go out, you know, to, to Virginia, like Ryan Pearson and went to Christ the King. He was named the uh, Colonial Athletic Association Player of the Year. Uh, you have kids who stay local. And you've seen, you've seen the last few years, the rise of the local schools have become big-time programs. Brandon Frazier, right? Brandon Frazier went to Fordham. He's, they're trying to get something going there. Uh, you see LIU has done very well bringing kids from outside and also keeping kids from in, within. St. Francis College has gone through a little bit of a renaissance. They've kept kids. Manhattan had a fantastic year, considering they were like 4-20, and 20, I think, last year. Romel Brown from Transit Tech, one of the most underrated high school programs in this city. Uh, he was named Defensive Player of the Year in the MAC. So those are great honors for these kids to, uh, to be playing for local schools and also to get exposure, too. What about St. John's? I mean, uh, they're going through, I mean, understandably, their coach is, has an illness right now, but they're not as strong as they used to be? Or? Well, they're not as strong. I, well, a lot of things have happened with that program. Steve Lavin has, has cancer. He's yeah, fighting cancer, and, and looks like he's doing very well, but he'll be back on the bench next year. But, uh, you know, there are some players to transfers. Kids, uh, you know, didn't come in. Didn't, kids who committed didn't, didn't actually go to the school. But, uh, you know, and it's been a tough year, but Mo Harkless has been the, uh, the bright, shining light. Forest Hills kid, 15 points, could be named the Big East Rookie of the Year. That's, that's a good thing for a local kid. James Padgett at University of Maryland. Doing, doing very well. Yeah, I, I love uh, Maryland. I love the, you know, their, their program out there. Gary Williams is a great coach. Sends kids ready to the NBA. 
you know, so, you know, you never know, Padgett may have a chance, but he's got a good chance as any. You know, it, it's funny, it's like the more exposure the kids can get from this area, the greater the opportunity they have of being seen. And organizations like MSG, Varsity.com, and even what we do over at Game Over, by using the internet, it allows the college coaches to come and see without having to travel and the big travel budgets and things like that. So uh, my hat's off to MSG Varsity and, and what they do because it gives a lot of kids exposure and the opportunity to be seen by these coaches. As far as when you look at schools like LI, you think they'll start to go after more local kids? Because a lot of their kids also are from, you know, in the South, the uh, West. Well, I agree, but I think also as they do well, some of these kids who decide, well, maybe I want to leave, may look, I mean, they may the stay. Day, maybe a few years ago, kids say, eh, I'm not going to LA. Well, yeah. You know, there was a lot of kids who decided, well, we just got to get out of here. Right, right. But I think you're starting to see maybe those few kids stay. I, I mean, hopefully St. John's will continue that, the prominent Seton Hall, the Rutgers, those local and type Wagner programs. Also, and Wagner with Danny Hurley has done a fantastic job over there. And the Hurley family's been fantastic. Um, so you see maybe those kids stay here and maybe build those programs. Absolutely. I, I think, uh, once again, with the exposure, not only exposure to kids, but the exposure of the home programs and the kids get to learn about, you know, what's going on right in their backyard. And it's not necessary to go across the country to get top-notch competition, top-notch basketball, and be seen if you want to go to that next level. There was a recent article, I believe, in the Times that New York City may not be the high school mecca that it once was. I, because you have talent everywhere. I have a theory on that. Okay. I think that when the pro team is winning, more people are paying attention to basketball, more people are playing basketball in the streets and in the community, and we get better basketball players in the years to follow. So the Knicks are winning now or starting to make noise. Let's see what happens. And the Nets may, and Mets moving to Brooklyn, so you'll see those kids. Today we're going to be working on our avoid the charge drill. It's a big part of college basketball now. Team, we, we're a very quick team and very explosive off the dribble. So teams pr uh, take, try to take a lot of charges on us. So our guys have to develop the ability to be driving to the basket and at the last minute jump around the defender to avoid the charge. So today we're going to be working on our avoid the charge drill. In this drill we're avoiding the charge. The cones represent the defender. All right, we're, we're beating our man off the dribble that runs at us. But then the cones are there to take the charge. We must jump around the cones and avoid the charge. All right, a big part of our game is our penetration. A lot of teams like to come over and take charges on us. So we have to develop the ability to see the charge, the, guy, the man coming over to take the charge and jump around, the, jump around the charge and finish strong. Balance off two feet, go up strong. All right, so we're gonna blow by, avoid the charge, finish, all right? We're gonna blow by the defender. The cones are the, are the next defender coming into play. We avoid the defender, pull up, finish strong. All right, attack the basket, defender comes over, avoid the charge, finish. All right, blow by the defender, avoid the next defender, finish. All right, blow by our defender, avoid the defender, finish. We're not finishing right now, but we like to finish. We got to edit some of y'all out. Blow by your defender, avoid the charge, finish. Good. This has been Chris Pursu, the men's basketball head coach at Medgar Ellis College. Uh, we thank you for joining our skills and drills this week, and we look forward to the next time. Understand you need a little help with your mortgage. Want to avoid foreclosure. Candy? Um, well, you know, you're in luck. We're uh, experts in this sort of thing. Mortgage, rigmarole, whatnot. Why don't we get a contract? Who wants a contract? Uh, Here you go, Pete. Thanks, Betty. Ride a toner. If you're facing foreclosure, talk to the right people. Speak with HUD-approved housing counselors free of charge at 888-995-HOPE. <laughs> How you feel? How you feel? I'm feeling good. Spin me, spin me. Got that, got you. Got you. Oh. 
Oh, goodness. But let's get back to basketball. Your theory. Mm -hmm. Tell, Tell us more, more about, about this theory. Well, I, I've always thought when the team in the city, the home team, winning. is winning, okay. you have more kids that are playing, more kids that are watching, more kids that are interested in going into the parks, and they want to play basketball. Okay. And there was a time when, when I was coming up and the Knicks were a winning team, the parks were packed. Then the Knicks were a losing team, and you, could, you can get to a park at any time and find empty courts. But now this past summer, with the interest of Carmelo Anthony and, and Amari Stoudemire, I saw the parks filling up. And this summer, I think it's going to be even more. And the more kids that are interested, the you better the talent have a much is. more diverse group of kids now because Jeremy Lin is playing? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I think that's going to happen too. I think, uh, you know, I think Spanish, more Spanish kids you see as they, you know, they come here, the second, third generation, they'll be more involved. It's going to be, you know, the cornucopia of every... Uh, well, now, you know, I mean, his influence as far as, you know, as far as the uh, Asian influence. Right. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. I think uh, it has already taken effect, um, as you can see, just by some of the newscasts that the uh, Asian population has really um, taken on to Jer Jeremy Lin, and, and I think that so their exposure. Really embracing basketball. Absolutely. You know, any time that you can see somebody who looks like you do anything, whether it's a doctor, lawyer, basketball player, police officer, it has a tremendous impact on you. And uh, I know it did as as I was a kid, had a tremendous impact on me seeing certain things, and I'm sure being Hispanic, it's the same thing. When you see it, then you believe that you can do it, and you strive for it. You know, that's a very simple formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Al Horford, who plays for the Atlanta Hawks, from the Dominican Republic, came over here. He's, he became an all-star last year for the Atlanta Hawks. So you can see that the Spanish community, see a kid like that, says, I can go strive for that. I don't have to play one thing or I'm just... You know, baseball, another, it could be anything you want, and basketball could be a tool as well. Sure. Now, down the street, as you know, the uh, New Jersey Nets will become the Brooklyn Nets. They're, they're playing decent now. They need Dwight Howard, and uh, because Dwight Howard will mean that they get to keep uh, their star point guard. All right, so uh, you want to keep Deron Williams, so getting Dwight Howard would be a major, major thing. Um, they got their work cut out for them. Now, from an economic and from a business perspective, do you see a battle between these teams when they're playing? Ho hopefully, you know, hopefully, maybe the Nets might be playing at home one night and the Knicks are playing home the same night. Well, is that the case? And what will happen then? Well, from my perspective, yeah. I think that this is a Nick town right now okay. and the Nets will have to win. They're going to have to come here and win and there's going to be a ramp up and there'll have to be a generational change. It's not going to happen instantly but kids. I mean, but kids younger, I mean kids 20 and maybe maybe 25 and younger may prefer the new spot. Sometimes you're a fan of who your parents are a fan of and who they've taken you to see as a kid but I think that the Nets have a tremendous opportunity. They really, really have a tremendous opportunity because of the cachet and the thought of basketball in Brooklyn being like the home of some of the greatest players to ever play the game started right here in Brooklyn. And I think the uh, Nets have an opportunity to cash in on something like that or to be a part of uh, a great, rich tradition. Now, Ellie, you were telling me we were talking about the Nets, especially from a collegiate perspective, college basketball. I think Barclay Center wants to become, uh, you know, preeminent place for college basketball as well. I mean, it's not just about the Nets and, and bringing those in for 41 games, but it's also about making that as exposure for colleges, especially first local. I mean, I think LIU and those places can have a chance, maybe a few games a year, to, to get themselves some maybe national exposure and to play in a big time atmosphere. And then you'll, the, the, Athletic, the Atlantic 10 are going to host their their uh, postseason right. tournament there. That's a big. That's a big boost. That means a lot of fans from all, you know all all around the East Coast going to come here. PSAL will they remain? The, well, the PSAL will host some games, maybe championships, Brooks, maybe championships, maybe some regular season games. Lincoln, Boys and Girls, Jefferson. The Brooklyn AA division is the best division I think in the country with the talent that they produce and the games they produce. So you can see them getting some exposure. That'd be great for the PSAL and for those schools. So you think the guard might have to straighten up and fly right, right a little bit? Yeah, yeah. But you know, if if the net really want to get involved and get ingrained to the basketball scene in Brooklyn, they need to come and get involved with the Sky Dome right here right. in bed -Stuy, Stuy, Brooklyn. And if they, if they win, they will come and people will get interested. You know, if you get Deron Williams and Dwight Howard and those guys and build a win in the next few years, those fans will stay around and they'll fill and then the next generation will follow them and that's how they'll stay competitive for a long time. All right, gentlemen. Well, I believe we are out of time. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure. You know, we'll be back. As always. Right, back. right, because the basketball season will be over uh, as far as March 17th is a championship game. 
at Madison Square Garden and uh, myself, Elio Velez and Mr. Hicks will discuss the aftermath of hopefully it may be Lincoln, it might be boys and girls. Could be Jefferson. Jefferson. Could be Jefferson winning their first title in 50, 55, 57 <laughs> years. Well, I want to extend the invitation. You guys are welcome here at the Sty Dome right. anytime. Right. All right. And, and, this, if, and this, this is a work, work in progress. progress. This is a work in progress. Right. It's going to be a beautiful place, a beautiful facility. Come on back. Red Sty, the Sty Dome. That's a wrap up for In the Zone. I'm Michael Bellamy. Take care and have a safe day. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.